Today, it's movie recap time for The Unhealed, a fantasy movie released in 2020. The movie kicks off with an elderly drunk man named Fluger digging up a grave adorned with religious symbols. It appears to be some kind of ritual. Eventually, Fluger succeeds in digging up a human skull from the grave. Surprisingly, a lightning strike knocks him backward. The man then lets out a triumphant laugh, suggesting that he has achieved his goal. Elsewhere, a teenage boy named Kelly is inside a convenience store doing some shopping. It is revealed that the boy has an unusual habit of eating paper, which has earned him the nickname Trash Boy from some of his classmates. While walking around, Kelly unexpectedly runs into Dominique, his childhood friend and crush. However, he hesitates to engage in conversation. As Kelly steps outside the store, a group of school bullies see him, Reed, Nelson, Brad, and Tony. They make fun of him for his eating disorder, and Kelly just stands there. As they bully him, Dominique shows up and urges them to stop being mean. The boys completely ignore her, and they end up shoving Kelly into a nearby trash can. Luckily, the store owner steps outside and sends the bullies away. As Kelly recovers from the embarrassing episode, Dominique kindly offers him a ride to school. However, her friend Sarah, who owns the car, flatly refuses to let him in, saying he would mess up the car. Shortly after, Kelly gets to school and discovers that the bullies have recorded the entire trash can incident and shared it online. Several of his fellow students make fun of him as he walks through the school corridors. Later that day, Kelly returns home after school, and his mother, Bernice, asks him about his day. He decides not to mention the bullying and instead shares that Dominique was nice to him. His mother feels happy for him and encourages him to ask Dominique out on a date. At the same time, an indigenous man named Red Elk stumbles upon the grave that Fluger disturbed earlier. He begins to offer prayers and ceremonies, lamenting the theft of a hidden power that was kept in the grave, a power he was entrusted to protect. The next morning, Kelly's excessive consumption of paper and styrofoam takes a toll on his health, and he falls ill. Concerned, Bernice contacts the family doctor, who suggests that Kelly may benefit from seeing a psychologist to address his eating disorder. In the meantime, Fluger is seen in town, making big claims about possessing the power to heal people. He shows his supposed healing abilities by curing an elderly woman's joint pain, which draws people's attention. Among them is Bernice, who becomes intrigued by his skills and invites the man to examine her son. As Bernice momentarily steps away to retrieve her car, Red Elk approaches Fluger and reminds him that the powers he now possesses were never intended for him. The man offers to help Fluger get rid of the ancient powers, but his offer is immediately declined. To explain his point, Red Elk slaps Fluger, and surprisingly, he's the one who takes the damage. He states that the medicine inside Fluger does that, it protects the host by protecting itself. As he tries to warn Fluger about the potential consequences of wielding this power, Fluger ignores him and walks away. As Fluger gets to Bernice's house, he attempts to use his healing powers on Kelly. However, during the first attempt, Fluger experiences some kind of pain and abruptly withdraws his hand. Feeling weak, he excuses himself and sniffs a weird substance in the bathroom. During this second try, he accidentally burns Kelly's chest with a cigarette and collapses after touching the boy. Fluger meets his end right there. Just as Fluger draws his last breath, Kelly instantly gets better. He rises to his feet, feeling revitalized. Soon after, the police arrive, removing Fluger's body from their home. They believe that the old man died of a heart attack. Weirdly, Kelly's cigarette burn has already healed. It seems that the healing powers Fluger possessed have somehow transferred to Kelly. The following day, Kelly accidentally cuts his finger while fixing his bicycle chain. To his amazement, the wound spontaneously heals itself. Excited, he shares it with his mother, but she remains skeptical about it. As Kelly goes to school, he runs into Dominique and Sarah, who are surprised to see him looking a lot healthier. After their departure, Nelson's brother, Reed, comes up to Kelly and starts throwing punches at him for no reason. Strangely, as Reed delivers a blow to Kelly's stomach, he winces in pain while Kelly feels nothing. Unconvinced, Reed attempts to harm Kelly with a wooden block, but it backfires again. Realizing he's no match for this new version of Kelly, Reed retreats with a battered face. Later that evening, Gus, Reed's dad and the school's football coach, pays a visit to Kelly's home, eager to learn what happened to his son. Kelly explains to Gus that Reed hurt himself while trying to beat him up, but naturally, Gus doesn't buy this story and gets into an argument with Bernice. Kelly's mom bids them goodbye and shuts the door in the man's face. Once Gus departs, Kelly confides in his mother about his newfound ability to absorb pain, saying no one will ever harm them again. To demonstrate, 
He asks Bernice to pinch his arm, and she immediately feels the pain. He also endures the heat of a cigarette lighter, which leaves his skin completely unscathed. The next day at school, Dominique drops her hairband, and Kelly's vivid imagination runs wild. The boy starts fantasizing about getting physical with her. Her friend Sarah eventually joins them as well. Astonishingly, the associated sensations he's imagining begin to affect Dominique and Sarah in reality. As they attempt to control themselves, Sarah even lets out a delighted scream right in the middle of the classroom. Before anyone can react, Kelly bolts out of there, embarrassed. Later at night, most students go to a party. When Nelson lifts Dominique without her consent, Kelly gets enraged and confronts the boy, demanding that he be more respectful. <laughs> As the tension between them escalates, Gus intervenes and separates them. He then warns Kelly that one day he'll find out what's behind his powers and teach him a lesson. Once the party ends and everyone heads home, Brad and his buddies encounter Kelly, who's riding his bike alone on the road. As the boys have fun messing with Trash Boy, they try to force him off the road using their car. Tragically, Brad loses control, and the worst happens. The boys get desperate and believe they have ended Kelly's life, but Brad is the one who sustained a fatal head injury. Kelly remains miraculously unscathed. As people start approaching the scene, Kelly claims that he simply got hit by the car. To Dominique, he shares the truth, including his extraordinary ability to heal. On the other hand, Nelson and his friends come up with a false story for the police, claiming that Brad swerved to avoid hitting Kelly, who was supposedly cycling in the middle of the road. After the police take their statements, they let everyone go. Meanwhile, Red Elk gets wind of Fluger's passing and pays a visit to his grave. By examining the soil, he deduces that Fluger lost his power before his death. After learning of Kelly's miraculous survival after the car incident, the man tracks him down at his workplace. He asks Kelly about his powers, and although hesitant at first, Kelly eventually confesses that Fluger treated him before dying. The following day, over lunch at a cafe, Kelly and Dominique engage in a conversation about an upcoming movie. Unbeknownst to Kelly, she has feelings for him and secretly hopes he'll ask her for a movie night. Since the boy is quite slow, she has to hint him about it, and Kelly eventually does what she expected. The duo then agrees to catch a movie together on Friday. Watching from afar, Nelson and his buddies are bothered to see Kelly move on with his life, especially after Brad is gone. In their quest to avenge their friend's death, Nelson and his buddies come up with a plan. After learning Kelly and Bernice's routine, they lay in wait for Bernice to leave for her night shift. However, Bernice feels under the weather and decides to stay home. Concerned for his mother, Kelly urges her to rest and drives to town to buy some medicine. As Nelson and his crew see a car leaving, they mistakenly believe it's Bernice leaving for work. To scare Kelly, they hook up their truck to the base of the trailer and yank it with the car's full power. As the trailer tilts, Bernice falls down, and a gas pipe bursts in the kitchen. Outside, the boys fail to detach the chain from the truck, so they simply leave it there. As the trailer house fills up with gas, Bernice attempts to leave but trips over a lamp, collapsing to the floor. Regrettably, the lamp causes a spark that leads to a massive explosion fueled by the gas. Some time later, Kelly arrives at the scene and dashes into the trailer to rescue his mother. Unfortunately, he's too late, and there's nothing that can be done. Kelly grieves his mother's loss amid the chaos. After a while, Officer Adler notices burn marks on Kelly's body and sends him to the hospital. At the hospital, Red Elk approaches the officer and shares information about Kelly's extraordinary power. The man suggests talking to Kelly about it, but Officer Adler refuses to bring it up at such a difficult moment in the boy's life. Respecting his decision, Red Elk tells Adler to contact him when the moment is appropriate. The next day, after all of his burn marks have miraculously healed, Kelly goes directly to his mother's funeral. Dominique provides him with support, assuring him that crying doesn't indicate weakness. When Kelly reveals his intention to leave town, Dominique is disappointed. The two then share an emotionally charged kiss, and the girl leaves. Shortly after, Kelly finds Fluger's grave in the same cemetery and starts eating a wild weed growing there. He hopes that consuming it might somehow rid him of his powers. However, the boy simply feels nauseous and starts vomiting. Sarah, who's looking for Dominique, witnesses the whole thing from afar. Later, Officer Adler takes Kelly to social services and talks about the details of his mother's death. Once Kelly learns that the trailer was dislocated before the gas explosion, he becomes convinced that it wasn't an accident and that someone intentionally pulled it to harm the support. Meanwhile, Nelson and his pals are cruising in their truck, displaying no remorse for ending Bernice's life. 
they are on their way to a river bend to have fun. As they drive, they come across Adler and Kelly. The boys ignore the officer and mock Kelly. When Kelly sees their truck, he instantly realizes his bullies must be responsible for his mother's tragic passing. So, without wasting time, he exits the moving car and sneakily tails them down to the river bend. Soon after, as Tucker enjoys his swim and the rest playfully toss rocks his way, Kelly snatches Tucker's shirt and wraps it around his own neck. This causes Tucker to fight for breath and struggle to stay above water. Eventually, Tucker meets his end in the river, while Nelson and the gang watch in sheer horror. Although Nelson attempts to rescue him, it's all in vain. Kelly then boldly reveals that he's the one who caused Tucker's death. As he goes for Nelson's shirt, Officer Adler appears on the scene, so Kelly decides to run away and deal with the others later. The bullies struggle to come up with a credible story, so Adler begins suspecting the group might be involved in their friend's demise. That evening, Kelly meets up with Dominique and shares his plan to avenge his mother's death. However, she proposes a different approach, persuading Nelson and the others to confess what they did to Bernice. Kelly sees wisdom in her words, and they share a meaningful moment together. The following day, Kelly deliberately barges into a chemistry class and provokes Tony, one of the bullies, hoping to extract a confession from him. Initially, Tony keeps his cool, but when Kelly pushes him to his limits, he loses his temper and throws some chemicals at Kelly. As expected, Kelly's powers cause Tony to burn himself, and the boy does not survive. Witnessing this horrific event, Dominique becomes furious with Kelly, so he leaves. Later at night, Sarah meets up with Nelson, and together, they hatch a plan to get back at Kelly for ending Tony's life. She informs Nelson about a particular vine from the cemetery that made Kelly puke like crazy. So, the duo makes their way to the graveyard to fetch the vine and somehow use it as a weapon against Kelly. The following day, Gus takes his sons to football practice, and Adler notices the chain that was connected to Gus' truck during Bernice's accident. He questions Nelson and Reed about it, but they play dumb. I don't know what you're talking about, sir. Just then, Kelly arrives at the practice field, armed with an electric drill and sporting a piece of Nelson's clothing. In a desperate attempt to force Nelson to confess, Kelly threatens to harm himself with the electric drill. However, Nelson came prepared and brought some kind of vine juice from the cemetery. Just as Kelly begins drilling, Nelson tries to spray it on him. But the pain in his knees instantly brings him down. Adler implores Kelly to stop, but he persists, drilling into Nelson's knees until the bully finally confesses. As soon as Kelly takes a break, Nelson takes the opportunity to spray him with the vine juice. This momentarily stuns the boy and makes him feel sick. At that moment, Dominique arrives and persuades Kelly to put an end to the violence. Amidst the chaos, Gus takes Adler's gun and consumed by anger, shoots Kelly. To the family's misfortune, both Gus and Nelson get affected by the bullet and perish on the spot. Soon after, Dominique convinces Kelly to give up his powers and become a normal person again. Adler also offers to help. Together with Red Elk, the group gathers at Pfluger's cemetery to perform a ritual. The ancient grave is dug, and Red Elk explains that for the powers to be released, Kelly must sacrifice his life. Learning this halfway through the ritual, Kelly attempts to run away. A police officer sees him and opens fire, unintentionally hitting Dominique and himself in the process. As Dominique draws her last breaths, Kelly gives her a farewell kiss. Now seeing his powers as a curse, Kelly consumes Pfluger's heart to put an end to it. As the medicine fights to survive inside Kelly, Adler takes the ultimate step and fatally shoots him. In the last scene, police officers transport the lifeless bodies of Dominique and Kelly in a van. All of a sudden, Dominique miraculously awakens, now in possession of healing abilities. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.